Very happy to be joined by the director and stars of the movie Seabird. The director is Benedict Andrews, and the stars are Kristen Stewart and Anthony Mackie. Hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> Studio audience. That's listen. You're like 1985. <laughs> At nine in the morning. That's yeah, very impressive. Yeah. Benedict, you and I have the same introduction to Gene Seberg, which is high school watching Abu Dasufla, Breathless, her, one of her really iconic movies. What struck you? Do you remember when you saw that movie for the first time? I remember. Yeah, it's kind of completely set in my imagination from Madame Savagel's French class, <laughs> where I think she would get these great prints from the Alliance Francaise of these incredible films. So the, the Wages of Fear and... Um, 400 Blows. 500 blows and, and saw Jean in this and um, her performance in that movie is just so incandescent and so alive and so freewheeling um, and in it she, she kind of changes what we perceive of as, as screen acting. Um, I think she be it, it becomes a kind of a idea of what we want to see in, in, in truth of it the truth of an actor in, in that performance. And there was just something so so free and so so full of life in it that, that, I, that I never forgot her performance. Hmm. I mean, Kristen, obviously you must have been asked so many times about similarities between you and your career and Gene Seberg and her career. You're the only American actress ever to win a César Award. You perform in American films and French films. Had you felt something of a kinship to Gene Seberg before you ever made this project? Uh, well, my my only my only uh, interaction with her work was was with Breathless um, as well, and uh, I, I as I came to learn more about her, um, I suppose yeah, I, I never really was like oh she's like me, but um, <laughs> I, uh, I I I understand she had these she has a really Im impulsive kind of. Uh, this nature that you really kind of you really never know where it's going to go. She's not a performer per se. You know, some some people are, and then some people really find a different way into their work. And she was always um, re really really was following something physical. And and like uh, in in that time, it was a, it was a lot more typical for people to really stand and deliver and really know kind of what they were giving. And she was really digging and excavating. And I think that that just had you know, a much more welcome home in France where it wasn't necessarily like packaged and delivered ideas. People were really d digging mm. and um, making weird stuff. And I think it's lame when, I, uh, I, I, there's this like really common word now. It's like, well, yeah, it's, you know, people are willing to take risk, you know, really risky stuff. It's like, yeah, people were like a little more honest there. Like she was kind of slated for her first couple of films, which are some of my favorite performances that she gave because she was like, being a kind of a, a weirdo, right. and it was like she just she wasn't performing. She was she was very present. Um, so like I, I that's my favorite thing about her. The movie tells us all so much that I certainly had no idea that she had involvement with Black Panthers. which she died so young, was there something that you learned in the process of this that was the most eye opening for you about well, her? Well, all of that. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the ironic thing about this story is that you know. Most people that like movies know Gene Seberg and Breathless and all that, but like, you know, you, you mentioned this story and most people go, oh my gosh, I have no idea. And that's, it's such a, it's really like an incredibly beautiful thing to be a, a part of releasing that information. You know, it's like a vindication on a, on a really uh, gorgeous level. That's very sad that she wasn't like around to see, but um, uh, they ultimately didn't, win because we know mm. now but like for many years it was like the cover-up worked you know right. what I mean yeah. like she really was muzzled in this grotesque way Anthony we've obviously seen Black Panthers portrayed in films before but never I don't think to the complexity that is in your hands in this film as Hakeem Jamal what were you most interested in bringing across as you were putting this performance and character together. Well, the great thing about uh, Hakeem Jamal is he wasn't a Black Panther. He had his own movement separate from that, but they supported him uh, because of his relationships and background with other people in the party. Um, but, you know, I didn't want, I feel like there's such a stigma, there's such a negative connotation that comes along with the idea of being a Black Panther. And that was put out there by, you know, the American government trying to stifle that movement as far as empowerment for African-Americans and people of color at that time. 
So it was just more for me to show this uh, intelligent, um, easygoing figure who was misrepresented and thrown into the limelight in a very negative way that truly wasn't who he was at all and what he represented at all. Yeah. What about the scenes where you guys are kind of recreating Gene's work? I mean, what, what was that involving as far as you know, trying to make it seem really accurate and did you take a lot of time to study what she had done in order to make it seem just right? We began on our hair and makeup day with recreating the shoot from Breathless, like so we jumped in the deep end. Oh my gosh. Um, and we studied that very accurately, like every kind of single beat of Jean's gesture in that, and also the audition we did on that day, her audition for Otto, Otto Preminger the, when, she's, when she's 18 year, years old. But the, they were the only bits we really studied Accurately, the rest well, we the only Googleable bits that are in the movie. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we were like, well, we "Got to get this, this right." <laughs> yeah, and in the, in the others, I guess we. What I love about Kristen's performance is she she kind of embodies Jean from the inside out. Like you were talking about, Jean was that type of act, actress too. So it was very important for us to not try and kind of copy Jean, except in those moments very accurately. But there's one other moment that I really love that was kind of quite spontaneous when Jean is taking pills in the, in the mirror, uh, in, in the bathroom in New York, and she does this little gesture that is a moment that, from Breathless, it's a little quote from, from Breathless, and that was... Breathless is so gestural, that's one of the coolest parts about the movie, is like all the weird ways that they interact physically together, and like... And this is completely. Out we, of nowhere, I think we yeah. got our shot already. Like, right. and w then I kind of we I whispered to you like, do you remember that moment in Breathless where she does that? Let's yeah. do it now. Yeah, and yeah. it's one of my favorite moments in the movie because of that. that she, the kind of ghost of one of Jean's performance is coming back to her at a moment of crisis, but it's it's unstudied. <laughs> yeah. How great that you allowed for that kind of spontaneous moment to happen. That's I think what you're probably always wanting, right? Good job. Yeah. Okay, so Anthony and Kristen, you guys both have other projects that people are excited about coming up. Kristen, you've got Charlie's Angels this fall. Anthony, you've got The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, a Disney Plus series. Which of the two of those is gonna be the bigger deal? <laughs> <laughs> I think if you look at the cast of her, her movie and the cast of my show, her, her cast definitely beats my cast. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> um, Elizabeth Banks did say that audiences are going to be surprised when they see how much fun you're having in Charlie's Angels. Was it fun? Yeah, I'm really a somber time. <laughs> <laughs> what was most fun? Shocking. Uh, it, um, the, the girls are amazing. I'm, I love them so much. Like, uh, I mean, that's kind of the whole point of the movie, you know. Like, they're in, they're, I'm super proud of them and stuff and like... Uh, Liz is so good at what she does, honestly. Like, she knocks it out of the park. I'm so proud of her, too. I don't know. Great. Um, yeah, so. And then See, fine. I can't say Sebastian's so amazing. I'm so proud of her. It don't even have the same <laughs> ring to it. You know? Girls have a thing. We just have yeah, this thing. It's, it's like, good. They're so awesome. It's like, we're here. Well, okay, so Anthony, what's the best part about doing an Avengers project without Chris Evans in it? Uh, <laughs> you get to sleep. Uh, you, you get a, a lot of downtime. Oh. Uh, no, there is no, there is no uh, good part about it. I've said it before and I'll say it a thousand times. Chris is one of my closest friends and when the three of us get together, it's, a, it's hell and ha anarchy. <laughs> so um, hopefully we'll be able to have him around to uh, cause some trouble on set. Okay. I love him too. Good. <laughs> good answer.